Are we ready to move on to charts? I'm ready. Okay. Go to file open. We're going to open up a file called charts. In the C drive in the DAF folder. A lot of times we not, may not want to chart on all this information. We want to chart on a subset of it. So let's create a new sheet. So right click on the example one and insert a new sheet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reference this. Go over to A2, and I'm going to create a new database based on a subset of example one. So you go over to cell A2 and press an equal sign. And then we're going to go over to example one and click on A2 and hit the enter key. So that created a reference to that cell. Now I can use my fill handle to kind of fill it down, maybe down to about six, because it's all relative and basically it's all from this cell forward. Now B, I don't really want January data. I want March data. So if I press an equal sign, over to example one, choose the March label, it's your enter key. And that will actually bring the March data into my new sheet. Click on C2 and press an equal sign. And this time we're going to reference possibly the average cells. So all I want is the cells rep, March, and then the average cells using a referencing. And I can use my fill handle to fill that down. Now that's what I want to create my chart on. Once I reference the information, now this stuff is directly tied to example one. So if I change this value here to 2000, it updates sheet one to 2000. Now that we have this information referenced to consolidate to what I'm looking for, then I can select it. Go to insert, choose what's called recommended charts, and create a chart style. So I'll just choose the first one on the list, and that's going to create a chart from this referenced information. But see, it's very clear that this information is directly tied to this data on sheet one. You can do the same thing on example one. So this is a referencing capability. And now this is important because sometimes we want to take a subset of information and bring it into a new sheet to display that information. And that's what you want to chart on. And that way you can provide that capability by doing a reference sheet. So you want to make sure your data source is correct and contains the right information. Now I can do this exact same thing in example one using an adjacent selection technique, which we talked about in the previous class. If you highlight the sales rep down to Adams, hold the control key down on the keyboard, select the March information, keep the control down and check, select the average information, I can highlight specific areas of the database that I want to chart on. So you select those areas, and then you simply go to Insert, Recommended Charts, and you can choose a chart style. I'll choose the second one here, which is the exact same thing I did on Sheet 1, except that this information is tied to, we don't know exactly which one they're tied to, you can look at the labels and make figure it out and say, oh, here's March. They must be doing that one and then average cells. But see, it's still there's a lot of data out here 
and you have to kind of wade through the data to find everything. So sometimes by consolidating the stuff like this, it makes it a little bit more clear and understandable of what you're actually charting on. But you could do it either way. It makes no difference. So getting your data source organized properly is one thing that we don't normally talk about in these classes. And so I like to emphasize that a little bit more that you have to get your data source correct and try to filter things out and get things structured properly so that you can chart on and it's much more cleaner at that point. Now once you have a chart, I don't care what chart you have, just click on that chart and then up at the top there's a ribbon, there's one called a chart design ribbon. Yours might say just design. And there's another one called format. So now what we want to do is we want to go through these various ribbons and kind of walk through all the features based on the chart. So now that we know how to create a chart, we want to be able to format that chart accordingly. So click on your chart, whatever chart you have, and we're going to start in the beginning and kind of work our way across. Here it says add a chart element. So it looks like we can add additional elements here. The quick layout is what I want to focus on first. So these are just layouts, different layout styles that we can quickly switch it around to. Use the same information, it just uses a different layout style. So there's a different layout style. The color combinations, we can change the color combinations if we want to change to a different type of colors that we like. That might have a different sort of look to it. So you can change your color combinations. You can change your chart style. So you can even click this drop down arrow and choose various. This is kind of a really nice one. I like this one a lot dark one here. So you can change the chart style to some other style or a formatted look. So there's that. This isn't actually a 3D chart, this is actually a 2D layout, but it looks kind of three-dimensional. Switch your rows and columns. If I want to switch my March and average cells with the Brown and Smith, I can switch that around. And now I can sort of I see the Brown Smith walls and Adams in the chart this way. I can switch that around. So sometimes you might want to see it created the wrong way or the way you didn't expect it to be created. And you can switch that around if you like. Select data. This feature allows you to change the order of things. So if I want to see the average cells first, I can move that up and move it around type thing. I can also come along and click on these and make some adjustments to it. The other advantage of this, like you can switch rows and columns, looks like after I move this around, it wouldn't let me do that. See, so once this is in place in the same order, then I can switch rows and columns and I can change the order of these. So if maybe I want to put these in alphabetical order. There's Brown comes second and then Smith and Malt. So maybe I want to put that in some sort of alphabetical order and do that. You could also add more data. So I come up here and say, if I have more data that I need to put into the chart, I can select that data. I click on this and it pulls that data in. So that's essentially what you do with this select data tab. Now that I've switched the things around, the switch order, switch between column and rows is disabled because I changed the order of, the, of these records. So somehow it sort of turns that off. If you move that back to the original order, then it would be active. Change chart type. This is if you want to switch it out to some other chart style. There's all sorts of different. There's a line style, and I can switch it over to uh, maybe an area style. It look, it didn't turn out too good. Or I can change to some other style here, maybe a, a three-dimensional type style. And we'll go through some more charts a little bit later. We'll go through all the different types around. 
move chart. So let's say you want to move this chart to its own sheet. So I can move it to a sheet called chart one. Say OK. And I can even move other sheets over there too. So you might use this for printing purposes. You don't want to print the information, the data behind it. So you can just move it to its own sheet and then you can print it cleanly. So that's the move is. How do you move it back? Just click on the move. And you want to move it back to sheet one. You can do it that way. Now you can also create a new sheet and move each one of these charts to the new sheet. So I'll move that chart to sheet two. So I'm going to say move it to sheet two. And then I come over to another sheet and where I have another chart. Well, I can move that over to sheet two. So you could move your charts kind of all to be in one spot if you wanted to. Then have your data on a different sheet. And maybe this is from a printing perspective. You want to print all the charts kind of together that represent your data. You can move those to and from. So if I click on this one, I move it back to example one. Click on this and move it back to example one. So you can move these things all over the place, as you can see. And so that's essentially what you build charts for. When you click on any field in the chart, like this one here, the Format tab allows you to change that selected element. So click on any element in the chart, a bar of some sort, and you see you have these little format tools up here. Click on this drop down I can actually change it to some other gradient type style. Looks kind of nice. You can also have your fill shape. Whatever item you click is what you're going to be formatting. You can put a shape out. Want to put like a little black line around it maybe. Go ahead and put in some weight. There's a little darker line around it. Gives a little bit more pronounced look. So you can format any element that you click on to make those changes. So that is the format tab. And there's a lot of things up here, but that's, those are the primary ones we use. Now, in the older versions of Excel, we're talking about 2010. I don't know if anybody has 2010 now, but if you do, you're going to see a major differences between the systems. In the 2010 product, there was another tab up here called layout. Now if you have layout, that means you've got the 2010 product. But the layout was moved in the newer versions to this little plus sign out here. So this allows me to change the characteristics of the of the chart a base of what I want to see. So move this down a little bit. So this allows me to put in like for example if I don't want to see a title on there I can turn that title off. If I want to add grid lines out there, I can add, click this little arrow next to the grid lines and add some other grid lines behind the scenes. If I want to turn my legend off, or maybe I want to move the legend to a different position. So I'm going to move it over to the left side, or the top, or the right, or the bottom. So I can move my legend around. If you want to add a data table, that puts a little data table underneath of it. Add data labels. That works really nice for like a pie chart because it puts the values out there. So that might work better for that. A little cluttered, I think. All right. So that's essentially some of the options that are available. You can also add a trend line. So if I click on this, on one of these bars here, series, add a trend line, I can change it to some other style, like I want to do an exponential or linear forecast trend line. So there's a couple different 
styles out there. So that shows me the trend of this line of this series that are going up. If you want to turn off the trend line, you just click on it and it turns it off. So these new options here used to be up in the layout tab and they're now in the sidebar. And so I didn't hear anybody tell me that they had the layout tab or not. But if you did, then that means you've got the 2010 product. Now this chart style is exactly the same thing that we saw up here. So we click on the chart and you go to design layout. These are the chart styles. And these are the colors. So you can see here's my color tab and there's my styles. So they just sort of provided that more accessible to you. This is sort of a newer filter feature they added, this little filter icon. So this allows me to filter things out that I don't want to see. So if I want to turn off Smith, for example, and you have to hit the word apply at the bottom, that sort of filters that out within the chart itself. All it is is just not visually being displayed. So that's kind of what the filter feature is for. But you have to hit that apply button to do that. And so that is some of the characteristics of the chart capabilities. Now let me take you back into the courseware and let's see what I did here. First thing I talk about is how to create and modify chart. That's simply by selecting certain data, certain ways. And I went through different ways to select the data to identify the information. Then we went into the design ribbon tab and went into that in a little more detail. Then we went to the format ribbon tab. We talked about that. And then we talked about the chart tools with the, the sidebar, the layout tab. And then I get into different chart types and some more advanced charting here. Those first three sections are probably the most important to know about, to know how to manipulate a chart. And so before I move on, I want to make sure there's any questions about this information. Now let's take this and move this aside. And this select our first slice of data, the January data, not the totals, just the January data here. And let's create another chart. Go to insert. And these are all the chart types that are available. But we want to create a pie chart. Now you could create that recommended chart, and it would probably list a pie chart style. But these are the different pies that are available. You can also choose a donut chart if you wanted to. We're going to choose a standard pie chart. I'm going to kind of show you the differences in the two. That when you have a pie chart, you're going to have a lot of the same capabilities. You've got your quick layouts, you change your color schemes. You also have the styles. You change the different chart styles if you wanted to. You can't really change rows and columns. That doesn't do a whole lot. But you can select your data and maybe change the order of this. So you want to do these in a different order possibly. You can also move it. So you've got the same capabilities as bar chart. But the difference is that when you click on this little plus sign, you get fewer options. Because this it's only showing you the options that are available for a pie chart. In the older version of Excel, with the Layout tab, it grayed out all those values. And so probably people didn't realize why they were grayed out. They were just grayed out. But this way, it sort of eliminates those. And so all you see is what's available to you. So you want to put data labels in. I can put those labels in there. If you want to change the different styles, let's click on that little arrow. And you can put different types of labels in. Let's say you want to change the percentages or something of that nature. That can all be done in the screen. Charts are not that difficult to use, so I think that kind of showing you some of the features and knowing that the same capabilities exist for both pie charts and bar charts is how that works. And so that's essentially what the chart is. Now, if you click on any chart, I don't care which one you click on, but come up here where it says change chart type. Now, there's a lot of different types out here, but 
My basic suggestion is that column charts, line charts, and pie charts are probably the three most commonly used charts. The other charts could be confusing, but they could provide some more valuable information. So you need to choose the chart type that will best describe your data. So let's take a look at this stuff. Let's take a look at the tree map chart. I'm going to click on my pie chart, click on this pie chart, and I'm going to convert it to a tree map chart. So a tree map chart is just simply like a pie, but it has square boxes as all it is. Now I've gone through each one of these chart types to show you how you would use that chart type. And I've given you an example for each one. So let's come back to here. I'm going to click on this button here that says chart types. And then here's your column charts. Great. Different types of column charts. Here's a 3D column chart that you can create. Here's a line chart. We went through those a little bit. Here's your pie chart. Those are the ones we normally use. And the pie chart is kind of tied into the donut chart. There's some more bar charts. Area chart. Let's get down some of these more unusual. Here's a scatter chart. And so the scatter chart is can be used to create a scatter kind of capability. Here's a bubble chart that you could use. And so what I did was I created specific examples of this. In this case, I said go over to this chart here, create open chart file one, go to example one, and select these fields. And then go through and create your bubble chart. Map. We get to some of the other ones that are kind of useful, interesting. Down here. How about a surface map? Not a surface one. There's a radar. There's some newer ones that are out there that I'm looking for. Here's funnels. So to create a funnel chart, okay? Looks like that came in 2016. They added that. There's a tree map chart. So we'll create a funnel chart and we'll create a sunburst chart. And so the idea of that is to understand a lot of those you can kind of figure out what they're supposed to do by the pictures. But here you want to make sure you do, let's do a sunburst. So again, I put specific examples in here. I simply said open up this file called chart, which we have open. And it says if necessary, and then actually go over and select the sunburst worksheet tab. So what I did is I came over here and I went through this list here, and here's a sunburst tab. And I went through specific examples to show you how to make this. The data that you require to do a sunburst chart would be to have data that has progressive, like progressive uh, increase. So this takes the Novembers and in, to 2006, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and you have stuff that's sort of in the middle, that's very small, and then it expands outward. That's kind of the data you're looking for. And the procedure simply said that, okay, go ahead and select some data here. Looks like they want me to sort it by year, quarter, and month first. And so this, these things might throw you off because you may not know it has to be sorted first. I don't think it has to be sorted, but I've run into problems where if it wasn't sorted, it caused a problem. So I'm going to sort it by year, quarter, and month. And then I'm going to select A1 to A25 and create my sunburst. So I'm going to select this, click in here first, go to my data sort. I'm sorting it by year, then by quarter then by month. I think that's how I indicated that I wanted to sort it. Make sure. Year, quarter, month. So you have to sort it first. And then we would click on it, go to insert, and look for our sunburst chart up here. I'm sure exactly where it is. Let me see if I can find it. It's similar to one of these things here. There it is. So that kind of creates my center in the middle, my quarter second, and my month's third in the sunburst layout. So again, that kind of layout might be very helpful for you, but you may not know how to make it work for you 
my procedures kind of show you that. So you can expand upon these different chart types if you needed to. So there's my sunburst. You can see as I expand, you can see that how it, it sunburst out. Now that you're on the sunburst chart, you can look at your ribbons up here, your design ribbon, and you have all the same capabilities to make those changes. You also have the ability to click on this little plus sign to get some adjustments to the layout, add legends if you needed to, and various things. So again, that's the sunburst. There's a waterfall chart, which is actually is a chart that kind of looks like a waterfall layout. It just puts it in an orderly manner, so it looks like a waterfall kind of capability. There's a histogram chart and a whole bunch of others in here, of course. Box and whisker, people chart, a few others. So that's essentially what, when you talk about the different chart types, I've pretty much documented as many as I could in here to help you see that. All right, so let's click on example three. And we can just simply create this and create a chart from this. I can select this northeastern southern area, just the data area. Like I say, I want to create a chart on just that data area. And then I can simply go up to insert. If I choose recommended charts, it's going to give me some possibilities of chart styles I could use. This is more of a, a funnel chart, they call this. There's a line chart. There's some bar charts and some, there's a stack ball bar chart here. Those are some different styles we could use. Or you can kind of click on individuals up here, individual icons to kind of choose that chart style, depending on what you're looking for. And so essentially to create a chart is, it's pretty easy to use, but I think the big part is getting your data organized first into a layout, providing the right information. So you heard, heard the concept, junk in and junk out. Well, if you put junk in your database, then you're going to have junk in your chart. So that's the bottom line is to, is to make sure that stuff is clear. You understand? All right. Are there any questions on that capability? Okay, let's get into a little bit more charts. Back to example one. This time what I want to do is we're going to create some more advanced chart capabilities. So if I were to select the sales rep, go back to example one, and we're going to all the way to the total sales. I don't want the second total, just the total here. So the problem with this is, we're going to do this twice so you understand this better. The problem is the chart, the total sales is going to skew the data quite a bit. So we could create what's called a secondary access for that. So let's create a standard chart first. So go to insert. Choose your regular bar chart. Just a regular bar chart. So you can see how the data is very skewed by the total sales because it takes all the data into account. Now we want to switch this out so this total sales is distributed across. Switch it like that so that hit your switch rows and column. Here your total sales is sort of distributed across in each area. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to change the chart type. Now this is a lot easier in this product. In the old product it was a little more tedious to do this, but you can still do it. We're going to choose a combo chart. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create what's called a secondary axis. So we want March to be a clustered column chart, but we want the total sales to be a line chart. And I'm going to choose that chart to be a secondary axis. So I'm going to create a secondary axis for the total sales, but the January, February, March is going to be based on a, a bar chart on the primary axis. So go ahead and say okay to that. 
you'll see that it actually creates the two axes. So this here represents the total, and this primary axis represents the data itself. Now let me create another primary axis. So this not the data there, but I'm going to select some new data. I'm going to select January, February, and March and sales rep. Hold the control key down and select these percentages. But you see, the percentage is a decimal number. So the decimal equivalent of 25% is actually 0.25. And how is 0.25 going to fit on a chart? It probably won't even register. So that's why you need secondary accesses sometimes in order to bring these things together. So I'm leaving here for a minute, make sure everybody's got, understands what I'm doing, and you can select this data. And then once you select it, we're simply going to create a chart. Now if I create a standard bar chart, this, see my percent of total is so small, you can't even recognize. So we're going to distribute it across. It's so small you can't even select it. But there was another way to select things. Up in this ribbon up here, there is a... Here. So I could select that information this way. So if I want to select the percent of total, so I was able to select it that way. So this is a, a sort of behind-the-scenes way to select something if you're not able to select all the pieces for some reason, maybe it's overlapping with something, then you can use this format tool to select the information that way. Don't really need to necessarily do that, but, but let's go ahead and create a, a combo chart of this, secondary axis. So how do you create a combo chart? You go to your design tab, Click on Change Chart Type, and you switch it over to a combo chart. Now you see the value of using a combo chart with percentages is almost invaluable because they don't even register. But the total, at least we were able to see it. So this time I'm going to change that to a cluster, and I'm going to put in my percent of total as a secondary access. And so this is your secondary axis. So there may be a need to create a secondary axis on a certain particular chart. And then you simply say OK, and it produces that secondary axis for you. So the percentages then are charted as a secondary axis. So we talk about that when we get into our advanced charting section in the book. Now, let me just look at a couple of general formatting techniques that I don't care what chart you have, it makes absolutely no difference. Just to show you that you can click on any element in the chart and format that piece. So I can click on this bar right here, and if I right-click on that bar, I can come down to where it says Format the Data Series. And that actually creates a sidebar that allows me to format it any specific way I want. Here it is. So do you have a ton of options available to you? You can right-click on any element in the chart, and you can format that chart any way you want. You can change it to like a gradient if I wanted to. There's a gradient kind of layout. And you can change the options for that. If that looks a little nicer for you, then you can use that. So again, you can click on any element and change the chart. Now, look at this axis here. My axis goes from 500 increments, as you can see. And it goes a little high up here, so I don't really need it to be that high. Maybe 2100, 2200 is the highest I want to go. I'm just going to expand my chart a little bit. I also want to switch this out and go just 1,000 increments. I don't want to go 500 increments. 
So if I switch that out, I can right-click on that axis, right-click on it, and of course, format my axis this way, and it shows me what the minimum maximum is. So here it says that the minimum is the major units are at 500. I want to change the major units to 1,000. If I change that to 1,000, see how my increments will change. 1,000 units. See? If I want to change my maximum not to 3,000, maybe to 22 or something like that, I can change that to 2200, and that changes, and it moves my chart up a little bit. Put this negative number in here, so that's kind of interesting. So I'll take it back to zero. So there's my range from zero to 22, because I said 1,000 increments, but it's actually charting up to 22, as you can see. So that's the idea. So you can change anything you click on or modify. You can click on that. If I want to change the title, I would click on the title. I can type in the text. I can come over here and change and format that any way I want. So again, you can click on any element in the chart and make that change. You could also click on any element and come up to your format ribbon tab and make the change like we did earlier. Or you can right-click on it and get the sidebar that gives you a lot more formatting capabilities. That's just a little bit about charting, how charts are laid out and how they are structured. And again, all those chart styles are in the book. So we, if you have a question about any specific style of what kind of data is needed, that's the key. Just to make sure you do a sunburst chart, you have to have the data structured a certain way in order to create a sunburst chart. And so that's why I wanted to show you some unusual chart like that. And so my document might actually show you the structure that's needed, and then you can go back and redesign your structure that way. And so that is generally how charts are set up. So come over to example two. Now what I want to do now is I'm going to combine a couple of concepts together. Because we talked about a lot of formulas and functions earlier. But you can use the result of formulas and functions to build in charts and various other things. Okay, so if I were to create a chart data here, I'm going to have a ton of information. You don't need to do this. I'm just going to give you an example of what I mean. If I charted this, the bar chart, we're just going to have a ton of information. It just doesn't make it real useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go through and create a chart from this information. But what I want to do is I want to consolidate all the January data and put all the data right here. So I want to do a, a sum if function to consolidate this data. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to 1 and 2. I'm going to put numbers in here for months. It makes it a little bit easier. So there's my numbers. And then I'm going to use that as my input. I'm going to create a sum if function here. And that's, that's going to be the input to the sum if, but it's going to go out and grab the data. But the problem is I need to have the month numbers here. So I'm going to come to this month number here. I'm going to simply put a function in here that says equals month. And the input to the month function is the date. And then I'm going to fill that down. So that's going to extract from the date that specific value. Now, we talked about the year function earlier, but now we want just the month value. And so we're going to consolidate those months into a single value and then we're going to chart it based on that. So oftentimes we do use formulas and functions to kind of identify or reorganize the data a little bit in our data source. So there's my month one. If I double click on that, it's going to give you the month number for each one of those values. And that's what we're going to use to build this value right here. Let me go through it and zoom out on this a little bit. You can see this a little bit better. 
So we're going to click here and we're going to use a sum if function. So we're going to simply say equals sum if, sum if what? Well, if first it says the range, then it says the criteria, then it says the sum range. So the range is going to be B2 through B45. The criteria is going to be my month number, which is F2. And the sum range is going to be the D column, which is D2 to D45. So that is going to give me the, the total of just January of the one. So there it is. That is all the January sum total of all the data. Now you got to be very careful about these kind of things because one time I actually took this little fill handle and filled it down like this and thought, okay, great, then it worked. But as I looked at it, I looked down here in December, I'm thinking, wait a minute, why is there a zero in December? And there is actually should be some numbers in there. See that? So what what wrong? So you've always got to kind of second guess yourself to make sure that things are going to be correct. When I click on this one, you can see what's happening at this point. Hit the escape key. It's moving these fields down. So this one has to be absolute. So this needs to be absolute. We're going to press the F4 key on the keyboard and put our dollar signs in there. And this needs to be absolute too. We're going to put our F4 key on that. And then simply, once we have absolute in those fields, they aren't going to move on us. We can fill it down to get the sum total of each month. So even though it looks like it was correct, I did see that flaw in the December, which made me think a lot, a little bit more. So you've got to kind of look at your numbers really carefully to make sure they work right. So now when I fill them down, I should get some information like this. Now that we have our data reorganized, now we can simply create our chart. So that's what I meant by reorganizing the data is that you might have to do some manipulation of the data to come up with the data structured in a way that's going to give you what the results that you're looking for. So then I would simply click on this data and I would simply create my bar chart from this data and it gives me my 12 month period as you can see. And move some things around. And this chart's a little bit more uh, smaller, not as detailed, not as complicated as if I were to do the individual the records on their own. Uh, we could have sorted it and then did it that way and you saw trends, but this is a way to say to consolidate so we have a more simple layout of a table. And so what I was trying to do is I was trying to combine formulas and functions along with charting capabilities because sometimes we may need to reorganize the data with some logical sequence. In some cases, we might want to take things and use some text functions to manipulate some data. In some cases, we might want to do a VLOOKUP to come up with some consolidated data and then create the chart from the consolidated data or whatever you're looking for. So, so that's kind of my idea of what I meant by reorganizing the data to do this. So this is a little more of a complicated example, but it combines some of our concepts that we've talked about earlier. Are there any questions? Are you guys okay with charting?